So we can use the same method that we discussed in our previous video called Hess's Law to calculate enthalpies of formation, which are also called heats of formation, delta H sub F, for various compounds. To do this, we'll use tabulated data from Appendix C in the back of our text, found on pages 1059 to 1061. Let's take a look at some examples. For each of the following compounds, write a balanced thermochemical equation depicting the formation of one mole of the compound from its elements in their standard states, and use Appendix C to obtain the values of delta H of formation. Let's start with compound number A, NO2, or nitrogen dioxide. If we look this up in Appendix C of our text, you'll note that forming NO2 gas we'll see that the enthalpy of formation given is 33.84 kilojoules for this balanced chemical equation. That is actually the final answer. Let's take a look at B, sodium bromide. You'll note that if we look this process up in the back of our text, it gives us a delta H of formation of negative 361.4 kilojoules. So from the examples we just did, we have seen that the delta H of formation values in Appendix C tell us the individual enthalpies of making each listed substance from its parent elements. What that means for the previous examples, NO2 and sodium bromide, is that the enthalpy values we calculated are the actual values of energy transfer that will occur when those two substances are formed. Here's another example, propane, whose formula is C3H8. When it is formed from its parent elements, elemental carbon and hydrogen, the overall enthalpy value, delta H, is negative 103.85 kilojoules per mole. This means that when you actually run this reaction, three moles of carbon, four moles of hydrogen gas to form one mole of propane, you will get an exothermic expulsion of energy of 103.85 kilojoules per mole of propane formed. Now this also means that the reverse reaction has the same value but the opposite sign. Thus, if I take propane and decompose it back into its parent elements with the equation properly balanced, the enthalpy of decomposition is positive 103.85 kilojoules per mole. So this brings us to the overarching principle. If I want to calculate the overall change in enthalpy for a reaction, what I can do is determine the individual enthalpies of formation for each reactant and product in that chemical reaction and then add them up. Here are the overall steps. One, write out the chemical equation describing the formation of each component in our overall reaction. Two, make sure that all the chemical equations we've written out in step one add up to give the overall equation in the problem. If needed, multiply individual steps by coefficients. Three, use Appendix C from our text to write the individual enthalpy of formation values for each equation from step one. If the equations are written backwards, then we change the sign from negative to positive or vice versa. If we've added coefficients to individual equations, then we have to multiply their individual enthalpies of formation by those coefficients. And four, add up all of the enthalpies of formation values from our reactions to obtain the final and complete delta H for the total reaction. Okay, so now that we've got that down, let's see if we can apply this process to some more difficult problems. Using our values from Appendix C, calculate the standard enthalpy change for each of the following reactions. Let's start with the first one. Two moles of sulfur dioxide combining with one mole of O2 to form two moles of sulfur trioxide. As you'll note from the steps delineated in our earlier slide, we first want to show an equation for each individual product and reactant that indicates how it is formed from its parent elements. Beginning with SO3, shown on the product side of our reaction, we'll note looking up in Appendix C that when SO3 is formed from its parent elements, sulfur, and O2, it gives us an overall delta H of formation of negative 395.2 kilojoules. Now keeping in mind that there is a two in front of our SO3 in this balanced chemical equation, we're going to multiply all of the coefficients given in the original equation in appendix C by two, thus giving us this overall chemical reaction. 
the total delta H also has to be multiplied by 2. Now let's move to our next component, SO2. As you'll note from Appendix C, we can find this equation, solid sulfur and O2 gas combining to form SO2 with a delta H of negative 296.9. You'll note that the SO2 shown in our target reaction up here has a 2 in front of it. Hence, we have to multiply this entire equation by 2 and the final delta H by 2. You'll also note that the SO2 up in our target reaction is on the left side of the equation, not the right side of the equation. As a result, we have to take this overall expression and have everything change sides like this. Thus, if I took two SO2 molecules and had them decompose into its parent elements, the overall delta H would be the same as the reverse reaction, except that it switches signs from negative 296.9 to positive 296.9. You'll note that our target reaction also has this reactant, O2 gas. However, O2 gas is oxygen already in its parent elemental state. The delta H of formation of any substance in its elemental state is zero. So we don't have to worry about coming up with an equation for the O2. What we do now is we add up the two equations that we have, this one shown up here at the top, and this one shown here at the bottom. When we do that, you'll see that we get the overall expression shown here. I have two sulfurs and three O2s up here on the left side of the equation adding with two SO2s down here to give me an overall left side of my final equation. I have two SO3s, two S's, and two O2s on my right side of the equation. You'll note that the two sulfurs cancel out from the left and right side of the equations because they are the same. You'll also note that in order to obtain an overall delta H for this process, I have to add up the individual delta H's for these two steps. Delta H for the first step is 2 times negative 395.2 and for the second step is 2 times positive 296.9. When I add all of that up, I get a final equation matching the original target one we were trying to obtain and an overall delta H for this process of negative 197 kilojoules. Let's take a look at the second reaction. Starting left to right, you'll notice that the first reactant I need to focus on is N2O4, dinitrogen tetroxide. As I look up that compound being formed from its parent elements in Appendix C, I can find this equation having a delta H of positive 9.66 kilojoules. You'll also note that the coefficient in our target equation up top is 1 in front of the N2O4, and is also 1 in front of the N2O4 in the equation from Appendix C. Hence, I do not have to multiply this equation or its contingent enthalpy value by any number. One thing you'll notice, however, is that N2O4 in our target equation is on the left side of the equation. In the equation we looked up in Appendix C, it's on the right side of the equation. I have to reverse that. That's done as shown here, where I now have put N2O4 on the left side of the equation and its parent elements on the right side of the equation. The corresponding sign of the enthalpy value changes from positive to negative. Now that we've dealt with N2O4, we need to consider the rest of the reactant and products in this equation. Hydrogen gas is already in its elemental form, thus its enthalpy of formation value is zero. Nitrogen gas is as well. So now I just have to focus on the formation of gaseous water. So as I look up the formation of gaseous water, you'll note that Appendix C gives me this equation. H2 plus 1 half O2 forming H2O gas. Because there's a coefficient 4 in front of the H2O gas on my product side, I have to multiply the entire equation by 4. The accompanying enthalpy value, negative 241.82, also has to be multiplied by 4. Now all I do is add up equations 1 and 2, which will give me this overall equation. N2O4 plus 4H2 plus 2O2 gives me N2 plus 2O2 plus 4H2O. The overall enthalpy values for these two equations, 1 and 2, are also added up, and I end up getting the final target equation that I wanted, and a final enthalpy value for this whole reaction of negative 977 kilojoules.
So that's the end of our Chapter 5 coverage of thermochemistry. I hope it's been enjoyable for you, and I hope you're looking forward as much as I am to Chapter 6's coverage of whatever Chapter 6 covers. <laughs> Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.